Hello again, Pride fans, and welcome to another edition of the W.B. Mason Coaches Report right here at GoHopter.com. Dan Sabrino, Kathy D'Angelis, the head coach of the Hopter Pride Field Hockey Team. Now, Coach, two games this past week, you end up making it seven in a row, but fall 7-1 in game number two against the O.H., the win, the 3-1 win uh, against UMass Lowell. Just your overall thoughts on the weekend. Well, I think with UMass Lowell, we came out a little bit flat in the beginning of, beginning of the first half, and they scored first. Great thing is we rebounded and um, came back and played a very solid, strong second half uh, against UMass, and I was really, really happy um, how we turned it around and, and bounced right back. Well, a couple more goals from Cody and Aaron Sanford. Charlotte Lur gets on the board twice this weekend. Uh, the one goal actually that Sunday against UMass Lowell. She now has a career high. Uh, so just overall, let's talk about Charlotte first and, and her just growing in her role. I know we've spoken about it in the past, but with her, she's now started to find the back of the net where she didn't in the past. Uh, what has it been for her? Why has she been so confident? Well, we put her into an attacking midfield position, um, sliding her to an outside mid, where last year she was um, played predominantly in her central mid position, and um, a lot of the way she plays and how our team played around her is she would distribute the ball quite a bit. So we didn't put her in a lot of positions to get some field goals. So she's had a few field goals from the left uh, midfield position, the other goals have come on our uh, special teams, which is our attack corner unit. And uh, we've been working really, really hard with our attack corners, and we've got uh, the team back from last year. So I think with the experience and the practice all together, it's combining with a really good execution. And um, so she, she's doing great. We've got a lot of things to continue to work on, but um, she's been very successful also on that. I was talking about those penalty corner goals, which in the past couple of years has really been uh, Achilles' heel for the team, coming up a little bit short when you need a goal in that situation. Well, you have two more this weekend, and it's been one of the stronger parts of the game. What do you think contributed to the success that you're having on those attacking corners? Well, I think mo mainly is we're, we're stronger, you know, technically than we were last year, and we have a lot more confidence um, because of that. And the experience um, certainly would be the huge factor uh, with those players in those particular positions. And um, I think when you combine all those attributes, you're, you're going you're gonna to have a little more success than you, than you would in previous years. Well, Sue Kasturin also a big part of that as well. She has another couple of assists this weekend. She had two in one game, which is the third time she's done it for just a freshman. You've moved her into the midfield now instead of where she originally started the year on the back line. How have you seen her adjustment and her progression uh, through the first couple of weeks of this season? Well, we've moved her in, in a few of the last matches into the central midfield position. Uh, which she plays with a couple other players, and um, we really like how she distributes the ball. She has um, a, a great, great vision of the, of the field, and um, so she's able to use her, her technical skill and, and give some really good, great feeds to midfield and also strike a line. So, um, and, and that being said, we're really, really liking what she's doing, where she's at, not to say that she might move back um, you know, at any point in time, but right now she's in a good spot for us. Now, something we haven't really touched on much this season has been the back line. And even though it's been a young group, they've been led by one of the seniors who's in the midfield. You also moved her back to times and Holly Andrews. Uh, obviously, uh, Carissa Whitmer, who was your center back last year, she's back there again this year. What do you like from this back line so far? And even though they gave up seven goals this past weekend and, and the one game, where do you see it improving going forward? Well, Holly Andrews is, um, you know, she's our uh, captain for us, and obviously she's a senior, and, um, you know, this is the year year for her, and she wants to go out with a bang and give everything that she has, and I think she's been um, a key player for us because she really, truly, from her heart, gives absolutely everything she has at any possible time, and um, I, I think that is um, really, really a huge asset. Uh, to her young squad because she can fight and fight no matter what the situation is. So I think that that's very, very helpful for our back line. Uh, certainly Carissa Whitmer, um, you know, she's such a consistent player for us and she's so strong back there. And, um, it, it, you know, taking off from last year, she had a dynamite year in her first year, and now she's got the experience, she's got more confidence and more composure back there. So, you know, collectively with those two consistent players in our, our back line, um, we're doing some nice things, really nice things, like I said, despite the, the um, deficit goals against UNH. Well, do you think actually giving up that loss, really, and giving up as many goals as you did on Sunday is more of a, a good wake-up call for the team after winning seven straight, which was uh, the first time we've done that in over a decade? Right. Well, you know, the, the game itself with UNH, I, I, don't, I certainly do not believe that the seven goals are really dictated how we play. I mean, there was three... We had, there was four goals scored in the first 20 minutes. We did score one of them, and that's typically not 
be something you see. So um, the fast breaks is what really killed us in that UNH game, and uh, that was something we just, you know, we were we could not stop. And you've got a um, a player like Meg Flatley from UNH who just can capitalize and, and, and score four goals in the game. Uh, we had a problem with her, and we had a problem with stopping their fast breaks, and that's something we weren't very experienced with. And uh, certainly caught us off guard. We've got a young team, and that's what we're going to struggle. We're going to when we hit adversity, it's a little bit more difficult with the young team to to rebound within the game. And um, you know, it's, again, it's something we weren't able to do um, in, in a game uh, like like what happened on Sunday. So um, that's something we're going to we're going to take we've taken away, and we've talked a lot about it, and so we don't see ourselves in that position. Well, how do you, have you seen this young team bounce back and practice the last couple of days after being so hot last week and then just obviously having a little bump in the road? Well, we have a great communication between the staff, the players, and amongst the players. So when we debrief and we hear the players talk and we communicate, it's real important that before we go into a practice, uh, our training session, that we all feel we're on the same page. And, um, you know, after the game on, on Sunday, I mean, there wasn't one player um, that I wasn't disappointed in uh, how we could have rebounded with the mental toughness, what different um, things we could have done to make adjustments in the game and not wait till it, for it to be over. So uh, I think we've got a, a great a great young team that um, is very coachable and you know it's an isolated game and that's what happened and it's uh, it's over now. Loss is a loss and you know we, we put it behind us and we're going to use it use that for um, you know to make us stronger as we head into uh, this weekend. Well, this weekend, obviously, you start tomorrow night, that's uh, the afternoon, actually, game against Quinnipiac, who was preseason favorites out of the MAC, but they've struggled a little bit this year, I believe two and five on the season. And then Syracuse, a really tough game this upcoming Sunday. You saw them last year, the early part of the season, number 11 right now in the nation. You're going into these two games right before, of course, conference is going to start in the next week or so. How are you going to prepare yourself for Quinnipiac and then Syracuse, which, of course, is even harder on Sunday? Right. Well... We always take one game at a time, and um, as far as the game goes tomorrow, most important thing is uh, to, what we've been doing um, on a daily basis is pushing ourselves to get better and to challenge ourselves. And that's something when you have a loss, you have to find a way. How are we going to continue to challenge ourselves and um, you know really work on our weaknesses and continue to um, you know get stronger in, in our strength? So um, really, for for tomorrow's game, it's about playing. Um, playing as a team and continuing to, to play where we have left off and, and use Sunday's game as a little bit of a motivator uh, to prepare us that uh, you know, if there's a fast break in those type of situations, you know, we, we know what we can do and we know how we can defend. Well, let's quit a PAC tomorrow and then Syracuse, the number 11 team in the land this upcoming Sunday. That's it for another edition of the W.B. Mason Coaches Report.